With the U.S. national debt sitting at over $35.4 trillion, the usdebtclock.org just posted a secret window that's happening tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you guys didn't watch my video that I put out yesterday with about 20,000 views talking about the Federal Reserve triggering a massive explosion in the crypto market, specifically with reparations from the Fed for a century of counterfeiting, money laundering, conspiracy, fraud, and racketeering, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video because we have some massive news to cover with you guys with Donald Trump hinting that crypto could be the solution to paying off the $35 trillion national debt. It may seem like everyone is too bullish on crypto right now. Well, we're gonna take a step back and we're gonna look at the Google search volume in terms of retail interest. We need to talk about what a former Goldman Sachs executive says that central banks are doing to the dollar to bring in the new system that consolidates all the world's money together. How that leads to Ripple and XRP and Ripple unleashing the power of artificial intelligence on the XRP ledger. Swift mentioned XRP as a bridge currency for over 11,000 banks. A new Ripple advertisement comparing Bitcoin to XRP. What Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, is doing that 99.9% .9 of the population is not paying attention to, and how it directly affects your portfolio and BNY Mellon, the largest custodial bank in the US. What they just secured from the SEC that is a massive deal. What's happening with FTX redistributing billions of dollars back to people literally less than two weeks from right now? How this is playing in line perfectly with this bull run cycle and where we are post Bitcoin's having? What happened last time the Fed cut rates where we are now? And then a weekly RSI breakout for Bitcoin that is about to signal the next massive uptrend in the market and what to do to position yourself properly to make the most amount of money possible. We're talking about some top altcoins that I'm keeping on my radar and what's about to come next if total three continues to break out and what that means for XRP, XLM, and the rest of the crypto market. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish, and if you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree, confirm it by taking the like button, smashing the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. As always, let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So the past week in the crypto market has been explosive. A lot of these projects up 20, 30%, Tau is up 80%. We're gonna talk about some projects in this video that I'm bullish on and what I'm watching. The first thing that we need to discuss is what's happening right now with the US national debt clock. It's posting a lot of clues in the secret window that's coming out tonight at 6 p.m. We'll be covering that in the next video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that. And then after this video, watch the one previous to this where we discuss what they've been posting that is encrypted and the meaning behind it and the secret riddles that have been posted about Ripple and XRP and the potential moon date. I find it very interesting when you pay attention to what's happening in the stars, just like the ancient civilizations did. It can tell us a lot about what's happening today because what media companies want you to do is keep your head out of the stars and keep them in your phone so they can sell you stuff through social media advertising to get you to buy into their narrative. So I'm going to discuss the facts and then I'm also going to share with you some things that will blow your mind. So the first thing that we need to discuss is the facts right here. Alex Becker posted this saying it may seem like everyone is too bullish right now on crypto, but on YouTube and Google, crypto interest is still at worse levels than we saw at bear market lows. 85% of the people have left, aka they're so bearish, they're not even interested. The hope you see here is the 15% that are left and the institutions you know, pumping in money as well too. So sentiment is still nowhere even remotely close to the 2020 to 2021 run that we saw last bull run. We need to 3.5x the current online action and keyword research to get there. AKA, while it might seem like we are all bullish, the truth is most of the people in the space are so bearish that crypto is irrelevant to them. When you see different YouTube channels, like for example, Alex Becker's hitting 750,000 views for thrown together selfie videos that he makes real quick, then, then we might be in the euphoria stage. But right now, views are low, even though, yes, you know, the videos on the channel are doing pretty well because I know you guys like to see the riddling type stuff and also the best fundamental news that we're putting out there about the truth of what's happening. The number one question that people have right now since it's the election year is, what would the crypto market look like if Kamala Harris wins or if Donald Trump wins? Well, everyone knows that if Trump wins, he's bullish on crypto. Listen to this. I'm curious what you think that future of crypto looks like if God forbid you don't win the election. The future of crypto, what does crypto. it look like? Well, I think it's a good future. You know, who knows about anything today? But I think it's a good future. I'll tell you what, you look at values, you look at 
what's happening and where it's come and where it came from, I think crypto's got a great future. I think it really does. Maybe we'll pay off the $35 trillion in crypto. I'll write out, I'll write out a little piece of paper, $35 trillion crypto. We have no debt. Right? That's what I like, right? He likes that idea too. He's laughing. Now, if Kamala Harris wins, the outcome for crypto will be no different because it's all a show. Former Goldman Sachs executive says that central banks are dragging the dollar just long enough to bring in the new system that consolidates all the world's money. So this was posted by the Black Swan Capitalist. It's obvious that this is about Ripple and XRP when Bitcoin is marketed to the masses as a distraction. For many decades, the dollar has been the reserve currency. And uh, the system is what I would describe as long in the tooth. And the central bankers are trying to bring in a new system, but it's not ready to go yet. And what we're, what we're in a period of great change and uncertainty where the central bankers are trying to keep the dollar system going and accelerate. So they're trying to lengthen the dollar system and then they're trying to accelerate bringing in the new system. So. Uh, I describe the new system as the end of currencies. So it's we're not bringing in a new currency. We're essentially bringing in a new transaction system that will be all digital and essentially end currencies as we know them. So what they're trying to do is involves essentially all the money on the planet. So it's big, it's complicated, it's messy. Now this is the biggest reason why I personally hold more XRP than I do Bitcoin. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. Crypto is risky. You could lose money in these markets. These videos are purely education, informational purposes only. So don't buy, don't sell anything that we talk about in these videos. The number one reason why I'm more bullish on XRP is, is simple. It takes XRP only five seconds to send a transaction. And if we watch the beginning of this video, you can see the X moving across and boom, it's confirmed and it's complete. And then Bitcoin, the average time for Bitcoin to settle one transaction is roughly 10 minutes. And this ad posted by Ripple is genius because it's a 10 minute ad. And if we just drag it, then we see Bitcoin start to move towards the end of this video. And then it says, you know, complete at the end or something like that. And so that's the best advertisement ever because utility in the long run will always reign supreme. And that's just a fact. And this is why we see Swift mentioning XRP as a bridge currency for over 11,000 banks and collaborating with R3 on a GPI link proof of concept. This will allow GPI payment capabilities to embedded directly into R3's distributed ledger technology platform. And it shows right here at the bottom of the screen on Corda Settler, transfer of funds on Corda, Swift GPI, GPI link, and then the cryptocurrency XRP. So the whole SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is complete nonsense. It's just slowing it down so they can get ready to usher this in because it's one step at a time. So all the negative retail investors that Ripple is not marketing to, again, guys, you know, I applied to go to the Ripple conference out here in Miami, Florida, where I live, and they denied me. And at first I was shocked. I was a little bit offended because we have, you know, by far the largest channel in the world on YouTube for Ripple and XRP. And they didn't want me to come to the conference because, you know, I'm not a big banker. I haven't signed an NDA. I would most likely spill the beans to you guys and give you guys all the information that I learned there. So they don't want me to see the key details on what they're working on. They don't want retail to know the truth because you guys and me, we're not their target market. Their target market is the central bankers, the elite of the elite, the people that have signed NDAs that can't disclose the information on what they've been working on. And also over the past few years, I've been uncovering clues and putting together official documents and showing you guys how everything leads back to Ripple and XRP. Now, if you didn't watch my video a few days ago with Jim Rickards talking about ICE-9 and how an insider at BlackRock told him that they don't want you to sell, that they will freeze BlackRock's assets. So why do you guys think Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, has only been talking about Bitcoin, not anything about XRP, when the utility of XRP is far superior. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not misuses like everything else, but it is a legitimate financial instrument that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits, and some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. 
And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. And when you look at the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, who nobody knows, and it's argued that it's the national security agency of the government, and this was created to usher in the new financial system as the beta test coin before they really flip the switch on the long-term technology that they're going to leverage through the XRP ledger with XRP and other ISO standard projects like XLM, HBAR, XDC, Algorand, and a few others. The argument where people think that not knowing who the creator of Bitcoin is a good thing, I think that's the worst thing ever. To me, that just means that's the National Security Agency or some other really intelligent organization because obviously whoever created it is a very, very smart human being or a group of people in a collective of intelligent human beings with IQs far above the average ape that just buys into Bitcoin randomly. And Satoshi holds over 1.1 million Bitcoin. That's $50 billion worth. So I'm an optimistic realist, you know. I hope for the best, but I also understand the reality of the situation here. The reality of the situation is Bitcoin's slow. It's not designed to bridge liquidity. It's a store of value that institutions are jumping into right now because they know what's happening to the dollar. So they need something else. So they're starting to buy up a large chunk of the Bitcoin supply on the open market. And the smartest institutions and hedge funds and venture capitalists, they realize they can make more money in altcoins. And so that's why we see the altcoin market pumping. Because when Bitcoins go up, altcoins go up even higher. Now, when Bitcoins go down, altcoins bleed out even more. So there is more risk in altcoins. But as part of the broader federal update on Monday, Chris Land, general counsel for U.S. Senator Cynthia Loomis, testified that the SEC and thus likely other regulators have cleared the way for BNY Mellon to provide institutional custody of digital assets. So the whole lawsuit with the SEC versus Ripple is a complete sham because now the SEC is coming out and saying, oh, oops, we didn't mean to call cryptocurrency securities. We didn't mean to create confusion in the market. But yeah, Gary Gensler in multiple interviews says there is clarity. It's very clear what cryptocurrencies are. So he's doing that on purpose to delay things. Now, the next question would be, why would they delay things? Well, it's so the central bankers and the elite can accumulate at low prices. Because if they just usher in the new financial system too fast, all Americans would freak out. They got to take some time to do this because you can't just go from getting everyone to ride a horse and a buggy to flying around in anti-gravity cars, let alone autonomous vehicles like what Tesla is doing. You have to go one step at a time, year by year, decade by decade. So it takes time. And they know that the retail investors are impatient. And so money moves from the hands of the inpatient to the patient. So the elite don't care how long it takes because they're just going to outlast you and they're going to buy up what you sell. But right here on this channel, we can't be shaken out. Don't forget, guys, FTX, the exchange that shut down and that was colluding with the SEC, where Gary Gensler was cozying up to Sam Bankman-Fried. They're set to redistribute $16 billion to creditors in quarter four of this year or less than two weeks away. Now, you guys know the creditors of FTX were big investors in the crypto market. Do you think that's changed? No. Like a vampire, once you taste blood, you need more of it. So they're just going to invest a good chunk of that. In my opinion, again, I could be wrong here, but just back into the crypto market because those creditors that have hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, they understand liquidity cycles. And so I'm going to discuss the liquidity cycles in a little bit, but the next bull run starts in literally 10 days, according to Crypto Nobler here. It's been 157 days since the last halving and Bitcoin always goes parabolic after day 170. Could this time be different? Absolutely. This is not a cookie cutter real estate property here with the exact same layout every single bull run, but history often rhymes. He noticed this pattern back in 2017 and made over $100,000 on alts. You know, in 2017, I did the same thing. I turned, it was like 10, 20 grand or something like that into over $150,000. Now I didn't sell at the top because it was my first bull run. So I got absolutely wrecked. I held to the bottom thinking that, oh, my money's in good projects. They'll recover. Not knowing that Every single project, no matter the technology, because it was still too early in the crypto market for mass adoption of distributed ledger technology and, you know, artificial intelligence projects at that time, you know, my portfolio went down like 90% and I was holding the best projects. I was holding Chainlink, XRP, XLM, HBAR, et cetera. I had all the top projects that everyone was talking about, right? So surely they should hold value. Nope. That's not how the markets move. So this bull run around, we're here to provide constant news information and education. That way you can make your own educated decision on when to take profits. So is right now the time to take profits? Well, you guys tell me the last time that we saw rate cuts from the Federal Reserve in response to COVID, after that, the markets went absolutely parabolic. During an election year, October, and November are the most profitable months, you know, last bull run that took place. After Bitcoin, Ethereum, we see memes 
see the most growth. You just basically pick the best ones. And right here, this video posted by Kevin uh, Svensson talking about Bitcoin's weekly RSI. When Bitcoin starts to break out and form a new all-time high and really go into price discovery, like what we saw you know, with Bitcoin just barely breaching above the all-time high, that wasn't true price discovery. When we really start the uptrend and we go above 80,000, we stay above 80 to 90, then start breaching above 90,000 and go into real price discovery, we will see altcoins absolutely fly because this tells the venture capitalists, this tells the institutions to start turning on the market makers for their projects. And the market makers use artificial intelligence bots to trade these projects back and forth so they can get revenue to grow their, their projects even more. And the overall bullish sentiment across the board is through the roof. So everything starts to pump. So you're going to start to think you're a genius because, you know, when you buy a project like at low levels and everything pumps, then everything goes up because we're in an everything bubble, but that's where you get overly greedy and that's where you get wrecked. So if you wanna make the most amount of money possible, you just have to be positioned in the best narratives that are poised to see the highest upside. And so here's one narrative that is poised to see even higher downside. So in order to know what to do, you just have to look at what not to do. Like if you go up to a homeless person and ask him like, hey, how'd you get here? Just do the opposite of whatever he tells you, right? Unrealized losses by US banks are seven times higher than the 2008 financial crisis. So if the banks have seven times the amount of losses than what we saw in 2008, clearly the banks don't know what they're doing. They're just holding on for dear life, you know, getting ready for the next bank run and like bank roulette, bank run roulette, you know, when the bullet of the trigger gets pulled on their bank, they don't know if they're gonna lose everyone's capital. You guys saw what happened with Silicon Valley bank collapse. It was disastrous for people that kept millions of dollars. A lot of people just have like $50 million, $100 million sitting in their bank account. Well, if the FDIC only insures up to $250,000 and you got $10 million in a bank account, you're screwed. Now I get it. The average retail investor doesn't have like $5,000 or $10,000. So, you know, you might not have to worry, but just keeping money in a bank account, it's going to slowly bleed out over time. And if we see multiple banks collapse, the FDIC doesn't have enough money to insure anyone, everyone anyways. So I never keep more money in a bank account than what I need to just pay basic expenses and utilities and bills. Look at this. The DTCC just confirmed retail has the upper hand on institutions for the first time in history, guys, if you've been watching this channel since 2022, you've been able to front run institutions like BlackRock getting in before the SEC approved their spot Bitcoin ETF. So as one famous Bostonian once said, the institutions are coming, the institutions are coming, right? And we're starting to see progress uh, where more certainty in the market is helping institutional um, adoption, such as the approvals of Fit21, other instruments, uh, both ETH and Bitcoin, uh, spot ETFs, those have been super helpful in uh, in pushing the uh, movement forward. It just shows you there's pinned up demand. It is it is pushing through. There's a couple of things that are a little bit different about this. This is the first time in our history where we've seen actually retail lead and institutional follow, but uh, the certainty that we're getting right now from the regulatory and the legal framework is helpful and will continue both ETH and Bitcoin, uh, spot ETFs, those have been super helpful in uh, in pushing the uh, movement forward. It just shows you there's pinned up demand. It is, it is pushing through. There's a couple of things that are a little bit different about this. This is the first time in our history where we've seen actually retail lead and institutional follow. So now that we have the spot Bitcoin ETF, Ethereum ETF, then potentially Solana, chain link and then inevitably XRP ETF coming, whether it's early 2025 or late 2025. Well, it's really predicated on Bitcoin breaking out first as we go from orange to yellow in Bitcoin stock to flow rainbow indicator. Now remember guys, the stock to flow rainbow indicator just simply shows us a color code based on the days until the next halving. And so after Bitcoin's halving, when we turn to orange, we see this consolidation pattern take place where Bitcoin was between you know, roughly $7,000 upwards of the all-time high. So went up near the all-time high, went from orange to yellow, hovered at the all-time high and broke out, went absolutely parabolic before going to light green. And then we saw the top of the market going to, you know, light blue after that for the complacency stage. Now, if we look at the bottom of the screen right here, we can see the crypto total market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is others, you know, total three. We can see that when Bitcoin went from orange to yellow, Bitcoin broke out first. The altcoin market kind of hovered sideways for a bit at about $130 billion until roughly January of 2021, then went parabolic when Bitcoin was cooling off. You guys see right here, 
When Bitcoin went from roughly $40,000 down to $30,000, that's when the great rotation took place. That money came out of Bitcoin and these institutions, just like I told you, and I confirmed, I'm confirming it here on the chart. So when I say a lot of stuff, you're like, I don't believe it. Now let's confirm it. So the confirmation shows me that when Bitcoin sold off by 50%, what happened to the altcoin market? Well, it went from $150 billion upwards of about $300 billion all the way to 400 billion when Bitcoin started to break out again. So during that first leg up from orange to yellow, Bitcoin moves first. Either way on the macro, if you're a more long-term trader, just holding the best altcoin projects have proven to yield a higher return because if we were to just measure Bitcoin's gains from the absolute low to the high, I mean, it was what, like a 20X or something like that for Bitcoin. But if we were to measure from the low of March to the high for altcoins, it was a 30 to a 40X. So altcoins doubled the performance of Bitcoin. And what do you guys think that's going to look like with global M2 breaking out? This is the most correlated chart to Bitcoin that I have ever seen. And this is global M2 on the 10 week lead compared to Bitcoin in pink or red right here in terms of Bitcoin's price action. And you'll see that when global liquidity consolidates, Bitcoin's been consolidating. Now that global liquidity is breaking out, what do you guys think is going to happen for Bitcoin? But more importantly, what narratives and what altcoins are going to break out the most? And so we can go to DeFi Llama and we can look at data of on-chain total value locked and just see, you know, Ethereum, people are counting out. I think Ethereum will have its day in the sun. You know, Ethereum's seen a big sell-off, but Ethereum will do well. I just don't think it's going to do as good as something like Solana, as you can see in terms of total value locked. Solana has been making higher highs and higher lows since April of 2024 when the rest of the market has sold off. Solana's total value locked is forming an uptrend, which is really good because once Solana breaks out, you know, the next high is essentially the all time high of nearly $10 billion in terms of total value locked. So I think Solana is going to be one of the best performers for a large cap altcoin. Also, I talked about the base chain. I am the most bullish on the base chain because this is Coinbase's blockchain. Coinbase is the largest exchange in the United States. This is a no brainer here, guys. This isn't even an opinion. Look at this. I talked about it. I said, we're going to break out. We're breaking out. You know, this is easy money here. This is the most easy money you'll ever make in your life. You know, a lot of people say crypto is like gambling. It's only like gambling if you don't do any research. But if you do research, you can see where the money's moving. We were going through this consolidation pattern. And now we just broke the high of July of 2023 for total value locked. We're nearing it on $2 billion. And so if Solana reached $10 billion last bull run and M2, the money supply is going to be even larger this bull run, well, we're only at 2 billion for basis chain. That's just a 5X to get to the all-time high of what Solana used to be. Now imagine what these chains are going to be this bull run cycle just based on more money because the Federal Reserve is not going to stop printing. I don't see why base chain couldn't get to 15 or $20 billion in terms of total value locked this bull run cycle. Now on chain, that just means the market capital, a lot of the projects on the base chain are going to go even more parabolic. Now another really well is SUI. SUI. It's at $951 million in terms of the total value locked. And this thing is breaking out and it's going parabolic into price discovery right now. And so I made a post on the Telegram group. If you guys haven't plugged in the Telegram group, I post SUI at roughly like a dollar, dollar and 15 cents or somewhere around there. And again, that's not financial advice. I'm just posting what I'm seeing. And SUI will be one of the top L1s this bull run cycle. It will be like Solana. So I think SUI will actually outperform Solana. Now, does that mean you should go and just ape into it right now? No, because it is breaking out. It's at about a dollar and 70 cents right now. It is near the all time high. And so I think it is a little bit overextended in the short term, but when in doubt, zoom out, because if we bring Solana's chart during Solana's cycle, when Solana first initially launched April 2020, came all the way down to like $8 million market cap right here, rallied up to about 160 million, then saw another sell off down to 50 million. We see this time and time again for new projects and new chains where they explode out the gate, they see a sell off, you know, Solana dropped over 70%. So a lot of people got out and they're like, oh, this project is done. It's over down 70%. Meaning if you put in $10,000, you bought after launch, it would be worth like $3,000. You pretty much think all of your money's gone. And then it just ripped from the bottom here of like eight, $9 million. And it rallied over 1,800% performing an 18 X. So then retail coming again, they FOMO in here at $160 million market cap. It goes and sells off another 60, 70%. Again, if you put in $10,000, it'd be worth $3,000. So retail just keep losing money left and right because they don't have any patience. Then look what happened once Solana broke out and it started breaching above the all-time high of 160 million it just erupted and it went all the way up here of $15 billion. And then that's when the next major consolidation phase took place, sold off about a 70% sell-off 
consolidated sideways for about 89 days, about three months before breaking the high again. So these moves happen rapidly. Look at the green candle that just came in, guys, on uh, Sui. It's starting to look like what's about to happen for Solana. Now, will it? I don't know, but it's showing early signs and the chart is almost identical if we trace it up next to Sui on what happened with Solana with this breakout. So could there be a pullback in the short term? Could Sui chop around for a little bit? Absolutely. Could it come back down even further and consolidate for longer? Yes, if the total three um, struggles to break out and Bitcoin doesn't break the all-time high. But guys, if Bitcoin breaks the all-time high, altcoins are going to absolutely fly. So where could Sui go this bull run cycle? Well, if we take the trend-based FIB extension tool, it shows that a full 4.236 extension is roughly around like nine to $10. Now, if we look at Solana back here and we do the FIB extension tool, you guys can see the Solana blew way past a 4.236 and it went all the way up here for the top of that bull run. So this is why I don't generally like using FIB extension tools for newer projects because on the first bull run, they tend to do well beyond that. The real key is studying Bitcoin stock to flow, rainbow indicator, the pie cycle top and the bottom indicator, also global liquidity, the four year cycle, all of that to know when we get out based on Bitcoin rather than getting out based on a price prediction that is amateur hour. We don't sell based on price because imagine if you sold Solana right here at $800 million market cap. Well, it rallied up to $80 billion that bull run cycle. So you sold way too early. Sure, it's always smart to take some profits along the way, but you want to leave some seeds because even from that 4.236 extension, Solana still did over 9,000%. So even if you bought Solana at the all-time high when it broke out here and it was at roughly $700 million, you still would have done over 9,000% holding to the top of that bull run. So in the micro, yes, it is extended a little bit right now, but in the macro, I mean, if this does a Solana run and goes upwards of 50 or $100, which is not a guarantee, again, it could not, might not even get to $10. Nobody knows. But if it does that, would you be complaining about buying at $1.50 versus $1.70? Of course not. So this data right here is extremely bullish considering it's still underneath 1 billion in total value lock. So if Sui does really well this bull run and goes to what Solana did last bull run of 10 billion, then Sui definitely has that 10 to 50x, maybe even 100x potential. Now, one project that we need to watch to give us a sign of what's going to happen in the meme coin market is Dogecoin. Is And Dogecoin is signaling what happened last bull run almost to the T, guys. You know, if I trace up Dogecoin's chart right here, you can see these key points that I circled in the past before Dogecoin broke out. You know, when Dogecoin had this initial fake out right here, you know, if we just draw the FIB uh, retracement tool from the high to the low, you know, we see it bobble around down here and consolidate anywhere between zero and 0.236. Then what we see right here is a break of a downtrend. For example, if I draw this descending resistance right here, Dogecoin broke the downtrend on the 2nd of July. It came up 2.236 and then sold back off to the 200 SMA right here before breaking out and going absolutely parabolic after Bitcoin broke out, went into price discovery past $20,000. You guys can see this was roughly around December of 2020 going into January when total three broke out, just like I showed you, you know, like five, 10 minutes ago. Now on the right hand side of the screen, we're seeing something similar happen. Obviously there's some minor differences here in how the price action plays out, but look at this, broke this descending resistance right here on the 20th of October when Bitcoin was breaking out and it formed an uptrend, came all the way up to the exact same point of the 0.236, doing exactly what happened here in July of 2020 before coming all the way back down to the 200 SMA on the right hand side of the screen, Dogecoin did the same thing and now it's bouncing off of the 200 SMA. It's sitting at 10 cents right now. And so we could literally be less than two months away from an absolute explosion for not only Dogecoin, the rest of the large caps, but other meme coin projects. So if Dogecoin does well, one of the main meme coin projects I'm keeping on my watch list is Brett. Now, Brett is the number one meme coin on the base chain. So if the base chain is where all the attention is, all the liquidity, the total value locked is increasing on, then Brett being the largest meme coin on the chain would be like the Dogecoin for the base chain for this cycle. Now, interestingly enough, if I put Brett's chart next to the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, we see total three broke this descending resistance right here and it's retesting the high that it was at on the 24th of August. Now, if this level breaks for total three and it holds 
has support, you know, maybe we see a potential back test right here and then a continuation of the uptrend. One thing I can see right here happening for Brett is Brett is lagging behind. So the next move for Brett to follow total three is to come back to this descending resistance, which simultaneously would be where the horizontal resistance was at from the 24th of August and also the 9th of August to see some selling pressure at. So if the uptrend remains intact, I would expect something like this to happen to kind of hover at this uh, descending resistance as support and then to see a major move up with the rest of the market when total three breaks out as Bitcoin's breaking its all time high. So again, guys, if Bitcoin doesn't go into true price discovery and start breaking out near election time going into 2025, then altcoins will lag behind and so will meme coins. But the technicals are lining up just too perfectly. If we look at Floki, another large cap that I'm watching right now, Floki has been in this falling wedge right here and it just broke this descending resistance right here. It's held it as support. So the next move for Floki, in my opinion, would be to one of these two levels, which would be the resistance from the 26th of August or the resistance from the 22nd of July. These are the two levels that we're going to watch for and where we are from each of them is roughly, you know, 15% from the first one and 50% from the second one. But Floki is another large cap that I have my radar because they're focused on utility in the meme coin space and they're capitalizing on what Shiba Inu did last bull run except with Elon Musk Shiba Inu that's named Floki. So if Elon Musk posts anything about his dog, usually that signals Floki to do something, but their team is actually really smart. They're developing tons of stuff in the space and they also have a project called TokenFi that's in the real world asset space that they're focused on as well too. Now a couple other projects that I'm watching are obviously XRP and then XLM. XLM's chart is very interesting, guys, because if we look at what happened last time that Bitcoin shifted from orange to yellow, you know, that was right when XRP broke out. And then simultaneously, the lawsuit was filed. And I think that was to suppress XRP, which is ultimately the number one cryptocurrency, because why would the SEC sue Ripple and not any other company? It just tells me it's the best. That's really what it is, guys, because do you trust the SEC? Of course not. So when we look at XRP's chart compared to XLM, they were really correlated together. I mean, we even saw a dip in XLM when Ripple was sued because investors that were holding XLM were worried that the SEC could file a lawsuit on XLM any day. But we see this break of this descending resistance right here on this first initial breakout right here on the middle of July. Then we saw a back test, which was perfect to signal a trend reversal. It's really normal when you see a breakout of a long term downtrend like this and we see the price rally up and get overextended. We see a sell off consolidation period back test the previous range that it tried to break out since October 2019 until June of 2020 back tested as support and then erupted from there going from orange to yellow. We saw the same thing happen for XRP as well too. Right here, we saw a breakout and then back test of the previous range and then XRP still did well even with the lawsuit. Now, let's focus on the future. Where are we at right now? Well, we're still in this descending resistance right here and we're in orange about to go to yellow. So in my opinion, what the chart could look like in the short term, and again, this is just my prediction, but if the total three breaks out and Bitcoin breaks into price discovery, XRP would follow as well too. Now I don't, XRP wouldn't just flip the switch and go to like $5 overnight. I think XRP could do very well and come upwards of 70, 80 cents, maybe a dollar, get overextended up here. And then we see some selling pressure happen and some consolidation going into 2025. And then we see another major breakout towards the end of the bull run as we go from yellow to light green for the blow off top. And, and I think XLM would just follow that because as you can see, XLM is in this triangle pattern as well too. When XLM breaks this descending resistance with XRP and XRP sells off, XLM would sell off as well too. We would go through a, a another consolidation period for the crypto market before the next major leg up. And depending on you know where we're at in terms of uh, price on that consolidation period, that would happen sometime in 2025. The real price action is going to happen at the tail end of the bull run when everyone least expect it. Because when a breakout like this happens, you know, it's probably not going to be as parabolic as something like Brett, Sui, you know, Solana, Floki, other meme coin projects, artificial intelligence projects with lower market caps. So I would expect the hate and the negativity to amplify at this moment where everyone says that like, oh, there is no lawsuit anymore and they still couldn't break above a dollar. So maybe XRP gets stopped short of a dollar, stops at like 70, 80 cents, then sells off. And then everyone doubts XRP and they start rotating into a lot of other projects that are seeing more gains and they forget about it for a while. And then at the blink of an eye, towards the tail end of the bull run, XRP XLM absolutely erupts like it's done 
every single bull run. So this is just facts here. I'm not even stating opinion. I'm just basing it on the facts. Now, could it not erupt this bull run? Yeah, there is that potential, but that's why we diversify and we don't put all our eggs in one basket. So if XRP does nothing this bull run, I literally do not care because I'm still gonna make money regardless if we have a bull run. Now, obviously I would want it to, but it won't affect me either way because I can simply just take profits from other projects and rotate that into XRP if XRP or XLM stays suppressed any longer. Because I've said this time and time again, that the true appreciation for these projects is gonna be 2025. And the reason why is because 2025 is a Jubilee year. Now, Jubilee year is a special event in biblical tradition originating in the Hebrew Bible, where every 50th year was designated at the time of celebration, freedom, restoration. Key features of a Jubilee year include release of debts, all debts were forgiven, allowing those who had fallen into financial hardship to start anew, return of land, release of slaves, rest for the land. Now, I asked ChatGPT to see what AI has to say about this. I'm like, when are the major Jubilee years? Well, a Jubilee year is described as every 50 years, starting from a baseline set in ancient times here. There are a few notable instances in modern interpretations when Jubilee years have been or might be observed. So this goes all the way back to circa 1300 BCE, and then major jubilees in recent centuries, 1500, 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900, 2000. And ChatGPT is saying the next scheduled jubilee year is 2025. I don't think this is a coincidence, guys, because this plays in perfectly with the four-year market cycle theory based on global liquidity. Some economists and religious scholars have even proposed 50-year cycles of debt forgiveness and economic resets. I can make this up based on a biblical jubilee concept called an economic jubilee. In the Catholic Church, the next official holy year jubilee will be celebrated in what year, guys? 2025. So that's why during this entire period from the pie cycle bottom that accurately predicted the bottom of XRP, when the pie cycle top comes in for Bitcoin, I believe 2025 is we're gonna see the majority of the growth in the adoption and the switch of the flip, so to speak, for XRP, XLM, the other ISO standard projects. So until that happens, what are we doing? Well, we're backing up our truck all the way to the bank. We're grabbing the bags, packing them, stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe the spending power of the dollar is just gonna keep going down in value. That's a fact. Based on data that I've been showing you guys for years, cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology has been going up in interest and value. That's also a fact. Look at the charts. And together, we're all going camping on the beaches of the moon. I'll see you guys in the next video. You can go to bullrunners.com. Put in your best email address. You'll be instantly subscribed to our daily video newsletter where you'll receive free value-based videos like this to your inbox when they drop so you don't have to wait for the YouTube algorithm because sometimes it's pretty slow. And you need to watch these videos right when they come out because when we talk about different altcoins or what's happening in the space, because crypto moves so quickly, 24 hours could be too late. So turn on the bell notification, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys. If you got value out of this, make sure you like it, share it with a friend. I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do, stay bullish.